Hi everyone, welcome to episode B of the Animal Alphabet Challenge. As you probably just saw on the laptop screen, today we're going to be looking at sketching a baboon. So last week was episode A, we did an armadillo. This week is episode B, we're going to have a go at drawing a baboon. Uh, and as you can see, just like last week, I'm using a black Sharpie marker pen and a pad of mixed media paper. Uh, this is A4, so, you know, it's relatively small. Uh, if you don't use the A4 coding uh, in wherever you're viewing from, then I think it's about 11 inches by 8 inches. So just putting down some loose outlines of this animal and a little bit of hashing there to start to indicate some form and some shadow. And the idea behind these videos is to just do some really quick sketches. Some of them will work out better than others. But the idea is to complete the entire alphabet A to Z with an animal rep representing each letter. And I'm deliberately drawing animals that I don't normally draw. So if you're used to visiting the channel and checking out some of the videos, you know that I quite often draw cows, sheep, horses. So the idea for this project, as I just said, is to try and do other animals. So that first sketch, that was okay, but I thought I'd give it another go, same photo. Uh, the photos I'm using for all of the animals, in general at least, are available royalty-free on the website Pixabay. So that's P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. You have to get an account, but it's free to sign up. Uh, and they've got a huge range of subjects there. Lots of different uh, topics to, and subjects to draw. So I'm having another go now, taking a little bit more care with the structure of the head, keeping the lines a little bit better controlled. So, you know, whenever we're sketching or drawing, it's always this balance, isn't it, between being really, really loose and free and fluid, which can often bring more emotion and expression into our work, or being a little bit tight and a bit more controlled, which obviously generally speaking, gives more precise proportions and a more, strictly speaking, objectively accurate description of the subject. And I find my best work is when I'm able to strike a balance between those two. And that, but that's sometimes easier said than done. Um, now, some of the animals I do and some of the poses they're in are going to be more challenging than others. Because I'm limiting myself to using the Sharpie pen, that has advantages and disadvantages. So there are going to be certain textures and effects which I'll probably find easy to do with the pen and equally some will be more difficult. So some things you might do quite easily with a wash of watercolour, you know, are going to be difficult to do with with the Sharpie pen. But you can see I'm able to sort of just pick out little details on the eyes there and just working, putting in some hash lines and some shading around the nose, a little bit of fluffiness around the ear, the edge of the ear there. So because because the Sharpie puts down bold marks in general, you almost have to make a decision sometimes. Yeah, how am I going to depict this? So that second one was better than the first, but I thought, well, I'll give it another go, but I'm going to use a different pose this time uh, for the baboon. So this, this time the animal is actually perched up on top of a vertical post. So I'm going to try and do the entire body and everything. So just beginning quite simply, getting the structure of the animal in place. And there are the, there's the right hand foreleg coming down. Putting an outline in for the left hand foreleg. And you can see I'm keeping, I'm keeping the lines fairly loose. Keeping each section of the form quite simple because especially when animals are contorted into an unusual position. So for example, here the baboon, as I said, is perched on top in kind of a crouching position on top of this you know, small area on top of a post, then it's quite a complex shape. So there's a lot going on. You know, the rear legs are bent. The, uh, the front paws are kind of gripping the post. So the aim is really to just try and pick out the simplest shapes we can that will still allow the form to be described. So having blocked in the, the general form of the animal, I've, I've now put in the eyes and starting to describe the features of the face. But again, I'm still trying to keep things fairly simple. Now, although I'm working on A4 here, I'm having to work the you know, same as the last two sketches. I'm having to work a little bit smaller than before because I need to leave enough room to put the post 
in in place so that you know, he's not just uh, sat there and you know floating in space. So that's something to consider if you want to give this type of project a go. You know, you could just do a series of faces of animals, you know, or they could just be silhouettes. Uh, you, you might choose to use the same colour that you wouldn't normally use. So, for example, um, you know, perhaps you don't use magenta that often, then you could just do a whole series of animal paintings in just magenta. So it's really good fun to experiment with colours or subjects or techniques or time constraints um, or orientation of the paper. Anything which you don't normally do is it's really good fun. It's almost like an artistic holiday, really. So you can see I'm, now I'm just starting to block in air, you know, regions of shadow. Having done a little bit of line work to, to get the general structure, I'm now just blocking in regions of shadow and trying to keep my mark making fairly loose. So even when it comes to the hands, the temptation might be to depict every single finger. But as we're trying to just create these sketches, you know, in a, in a few minutes, then it's better just to think of them as, as almost as mittens, really. And, and there he is on his post. A little, little bit of a close up there so you can see some of the line work. I will put links to this sketch uh, in the description below the video. So, you know, you can uh, click on that and then that, that will allow you to zoom in on the, on the pen work. But having had a closer look, I thought, well, it could do with a few little touches here and there just to kind of grab the expression a little, a little bit better than I had. So expression, you know, comes from the corners of the mouth and the corners of the eyes and even the nose a little bit. Um, there we go. So here's the finished sketch. And hope you enjoyed watching this one. So as I said, we're up to letter B. Episode C, I'll try to pop up in the middle of next week sometime. So hope to see you next time for the next episode of the Animal Alphabet Challenge. Thanks very much for watching.